Welcome to catchjitsu.com. Greetings and salutations. I'm Dan the Wolfman, guys, and I'm going to talk to you today about my idea for throw to sub speed grappling. Throw to sub speed grappling tournaments to try and bring various martial arts together, various grappling arts uh, together. And, and, and hit on something that isn't really done in modern butt floppy sport jujitsu um, stuff. That doesn't allow you to practice a lot of time getting live full um, competition training on your takedowns and on standing submissions. Something I'm kind of known for. I get very good at standing submissions. Why? Because I think that's a very important part to self-defense. And why? Because I think transitional submissions are a very important part to self-defense and to MMA. So, throw two sub speed grappling guys. Two by two minute rounds with the possibility of a third uh, overtime, uh, a third round. So if rounds one and two are split, just like my karate go jujitsu, as I made a long video on this, I'll try to make this a bit shorter. Rounds one and two, irregardless if they're split one to each fighter, uh, you'll go to round three, irregardless of the points. Guys, the goal is always throw the guy and submit the guy. Here's the ticker. Two by two minute rounds, possibility of a third round, takedowns plus 15 seconds. I've been doing this training since I started training with Dan Severn back in 1997. Takedown plus 10 or takedown plus 15. Wrestlers should do that instead of just takedowns. They should be doing that anyway. And, and I've been wrestling. I think that's pretty common in wrestling uh, gyms to, to say that, to do that. That way guys aren't just stopping, but they're hitting the mat, they're rebounding, they're sitting out, they're standing up, they're fighting that takedown, they're not conceding the takedown. You don't want to concede the takedowns, which far too many butt floppers do. But um, not only that, guys, you want to be getting guard on the way down, or you want to be not conceding the takedown. You want to be getting back up. You want to be springing back up. Much better for MMA. That's what we see guys training nowadays. And uh, more important for self-defense. Um, but, guys, you should be throwing and going to sub. So takedowns plus 10 to 15 seconds. This is takedown plus 15 seconds. So how do you hit those transitional subs? So now we're talking about we're going to be seeing guys getting better at their takedowns instead of just, I don't know, not getting better at takedowns. Takedowns are pretty important. Takedown defense balance is pretty important to self-defense. To true jujitsu, isn't it? And now if we can get the judo players to come in, because, well, they're pretty darn good at that throwing stuff. And those sambo guys to come in, that boy, they're pretty good at not only that throwing stuff, but that throwing into submission, transitional submissions now, aren't they? And we look at what sambo does great, and let's try and get that. But let's make this inclusive so it's everybody. Let's try to make it mostly white and blue geese if you can. If you're smaller and you got to accept different colored geese and NASCAR geese and so be it. But the goal is submission. Submission is a full poem, the full victory, baby. Um, but there are points in case there isn't a submission. How points work, it is very simple, guys. And I'm going to show you some video footage of me going with a wrestler in takedown plus submissions in a second. Throw to sub. All right. One point. Small takedown into guard or half guard. Not quarter guard. Got to be half guard. Small takedown into guard or half guard. Takedown, throw, use them in a, interchangeably. It could be an Aikido um, a takedown on the arm. It doesn't matter. Let's try and get the Judo, Jiu Jitsu, Sambo people. But let's try and get the Shi Jiao people. Let's try and get the Aikido people, Aki Jiu Jitsu people. Let's see what they can come up with. Two points, small throw to dominant top position, anything past the guard, even a three-quarter mount would be included, but but uh, why? Because that's realistic on the street, guys. Um, or a big takedown, but you land inside the guard or half guard. So a big takedown throw, some amplitude to it, some velocity to it. Three points, big takedown to dominant top position. That's simple, one, two, or three points for every takedown. Um, takedowns do not count, unlike bastardized judo where you don't stick the landing and you throw the guy and you get rolled over and you go yeah and you raise your arms that would pretty much suck in a real fight valet tudo's pride they're gonna soccer kick your head off so if the guy rolls you through who gets the takedown points the guy who rolls the guys through and ends up on top establishes position establishes control so a takedown isn't a takedown until you establish position establish control at least three seconds or whatever you got to show, show that establishment of control um, so none of the bad judo habits of all the throws or you turn your back if you don't stick them. It's 
It's kind of like how Parisian would do these awesome throws on Diaz, but get rolled through and other people. But you see Ronda Rousey, she stuck her throws because that's Olympic level. Trained, you know, with both of them basically. And trained with Ronda. I've trained with her mom a couple times, but she grew up coming up in the highest town academy at 15 years old under Jean LaBelle and Gokor, which not a lot of people know. Um, you know, and I trained, of course, there and got a black belt under them with Manny Gambier and Carl Parisian and uh, Karin Darabian. Congrats on opening your gym. Looks like you're doing well, by the way. Um, Ara and all those guys. So um, you got to stick those throws, and that's important. Um, so simple, one, two, or three points. But in that, that you know, if I do Ochigari, pretty high percentage for me, but I land on the guard, that's not as good as when I nail Osoto, baby, especially for street fights. You nail someone with Osoto, bang, and you go right into an armbar, or you nail him with Osoto, and boom, you're right in Neon Bell and con controlling the drunk guy, de-escalating the fight. You knock the wind out of him on the concrete, thank you, gravity, the earth hit him, and now uh, you got a you got Neon Chest. So you see why this emphasizes more um, stuff that you don't get at practice, and it'll be I think it would be heck of fun if people would give it a chance. I think it would be a lot of fun. I'm going to show some video now. This is me doing what I, I, I do whenever I can get someone that's halfway decent at takedowns. Catch takedowns plus 10 seconds. Dan the Wolfman vs. Wrestling Coach, who happens to also be a BJJ Blue Belt. Um, so I'm just going to play this video a bit. Look up this video if you want to see, guys. But this stuff can lead to you some, some cool stuff. And then I'll show you some uh, transitional submission highlights. Stuff that I would hope to see in a, in a cool rule set like that. So it goes for a takedown. I hit the uh, cow catcher. That's what I was like. Yeah. That's this folk style. Yeah. Cobra neck crank. <laughs> was called the Cobra neck crank on my box of BDs I had with Frank Shamrock on the cover because Tito Ortiz oh. tapped out a former opponent of mine, Yuki Kondo, right after I fought Kondo. Kondo fought Tito Ortiz for the light heavyweight strap. Kondo almost knocked him out in the beginning of the fight with Flying Knee, if you don't remember it. And then Tito got him with that Cobra neck crank or a half hatcher there. Yes, I'm bigger, guys. I, but, you know, anyone with skill, I find someone to go with. He was pretty deep on the legs. So, hey, if you can't be wrestling with wrestling sometimes, you counter with jiu-jitsu because I let him in a little too deep. I go and get him with uh, a choke because I adjusted my grip somehow. Let's see what's... Shut in. I sprawl. Go to quarters. Got some head pressure. I don't quite feel like I would have had something. Oh, snap him down front headlock again. And just didn't feel like I was getting something fast enough. So it's probably only like 10 seconds, but you get an idea here. Transitions. Let's see what this transition was. Oh, he shot a single sprawl front headlock. Well, trying to set up a Japanese necktie, it looks like there, which I'm not great at. I got short arms. And I think his neck kind of popped, but it wasn't really a legit submission there. I don't remember. I don't think I totally got him. Well, I definitely got him there, though. What was that? I know some Aikido people like that Aikido really standing submissions. Pretty good for self defense. Some old school. Grace Jiu Jitsu right there, or is it old school judo? Since it's all old school judo, or is it old school catch wrestling? Since it's all old school catch wrestling. So, and a long term wrestler, he's a wrestling coach, has never had that done to him before. Ask me what it is, so I teach him. Old man needs to yell, get some energy sometimes. I think he was pretty deep on my legs there. Yep. Slide single there. I don't remember if there's any other submissions. Oh yeah, I mean, we're just about done. So I'll let this play out. Uh, and then I'll show you another video where you can find some cool transitional submissions. Of course, guys, if you look at my one hour or my half hour learn to fight like John Wick video, fight like John Wick video, you'll see all kinds of cool stuff. And I should have followed up there, but I was gassed. I should have followed up. I knew I had the position. And he should have been sitting out, but, you know, he was gassing too. Um, but I, I, I should have looked for a, a spiral ride uh, a hammer lock right there, actually. I'll just play a little bit more footage, maybe for a couple minutes, guys, and hope that you like. Give a thumbs up. Say, hey, let's do this. Or try it out at your gym someday if you're a coach. Say, guys, we're doing takedowns plus 15. Throw to sub. Let's start calling it throw to sub. Speed grappling. Throw to sub speed grappling. Kodogaishi to uh, 
Juju Kitami here, a little Aminari roll action, inside heel hook, whoops, switching it up to the knee bar in the armpit. Attempt at Aminari roll, ended up turning into a knee bar. Oh, Kani Basami leg scissors to heel hook on the Sambo guy here. Oh, what is that? Ankle pick to tripod ankle lock. You see me a video hitting tripod ankle lock I uploaded last week. Live. With a tripod ankle lock. And then showing I could switch it up to the Minoa Man sideways knee break. Knee crank. Baseball slide heel hook. Guys aren't good at this stuff. I'm pretty good at this stuff, but what people don't practice this stuff. I mean, yeah, you should already be a blue belt before you're doing this kind of stuff and be safe. But, um... I haven't torn anyone's knee, you know, and I've been grappling 23 years or something. Some transitional stuff in sparring, a little bit different, but look at how you can counter throws by rolling people through. Um, you know, I've never really talked over this video, so maybe I'll just keep going. If you guys are bored, eh, maybe click off. Hopefully you don't, though. Hopefully you let me know um, what you think. Hopefully you send me some footage. Guys, you got a gym, or heck, you got a partner and a camera, and you got... As someone that's done some wrestling judo before and you want to try this out, show me your footage. If it's awesome footage and you give me the uh, go ahead to upload to my channel, I'll rip it and I'll upload it. Oh, there's some transitional standing. What did I do? A standing arm triangle right there. Oh, yeah. This guy I coached. I think he's now 9 0 in MMA. This guy I coached in the Middle East. Oh, yeah, you don't see that one too often. A standing crucifix neck crank against the cage. What was that? That was a Kali Tudo entry. Mark Denny style. Kali Tudo entry to the Cobra Neck Crank. Half edge. I don't know. Kind of made up Sumigashi head control. But I know where to, where to keep my body weight. I want my body weight on top. Doing some funky Ben Askren type stuff. for one on top. So anyway guys. As I just said. I'm Dan the Wolfman. And hopefully you like my ideas of throw to sub, speed grappling. I think it would be a lot of fun for people to participate in. And please check out my Karate Go Jiu Jitsu. You could do those both tournaments in the same day. How about if you signed up and paid your money instead of $180, you paid, you know, $75, $80, something. And you got to compete in throw to sub. And if you didn't do good, you only grappled two or four minutes. And if you do good, you grapple maybe 12 minutes. But now you get a little rest, you get some energy, and then you... Th get to throw some kicks and punches into your throwing and your grappling and have more time on the ground in the Karate Go Jiu Jitsu rules all on the same day. And maybe the next day there's a advanced or pay tournament to my Catch Jitsu grappling rules, which are also very cool. Um, look at my Catch Jitsu beta testing that with a heavier, bigger, heavyweight MMA champion. Um, very good purple belt at the time. Uh, when I was a brown belt, we beta tested those rules twice. Um, so look at my Catch Jitsu grappling rules too. Uh, which is explained pretty much good in the video, so I'll make a separate video on that. But anyway, guys, here's three different rule formats that I think are specifically good at rounding out your skills. I'm Dan the Wolfman, and please thumbs up, please subscribe, please uh, dance the blues, sing the blues, have some good times, and I'll catch you on the flip side.